In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly why you should not wear wrist weights while working out in virtual reality and give you three things you can do to replace them. Let's go. So we've all been there. We've all worked out. We're doing Beat Saber, Supernatural, or Synth Riders, or whatever it is we're doing for our workout. And we've gone, how can I make this workout harder? I know! I'm the cleverest person in the world. I'll put on wrist weights. But I'm going to tell you why you should never, ever, ever do that during a VR workout. But first, you're going to need a quick anatomy and physics lesson. Let's do it. Tendons connect muscle to bone. Ligaments connect bone to bone. And centrifugal force is the tendency of an object moving in a circle to travel away from the center of the circle. Lesson over. So let's just use Beat Saber because it's a very common one. You're slashing blocks, you're getting in the zone, but you're really not feeling like you're getting that much of a workout. So what do you do? You strap on wrist weights. Let me tell you exactly what's happening to your body when you put on wrist weights. Now when I showed you what centrifugal force is, it's that tendency for an object to move away from the center point when traveling in a circle. When you're slashing or moving your arm like this, you're creating a piece of a circle, a semicircle, if you will. Now, if you have wrist weights on while you're doing this, where do you think that weight's going? It's going out. It's going out and away from your body. And it's gonna be pulling on ligaments and tendons in a way that is not great. So if you've ever been to the fair and you've ridden on one of those uh, I don't know what they're called. You get inside, they spin around real fast, and you feel like you're getting pressed to the wall. Usually you can scoot up on the wall and go, oh, I'm stuck to the wall. But you can't really tell because you're inside and you can't see it spinning. That's you in centripetal and centrifugal force. But that's exactly what's happening to your joints when you're doing that slashing motion. It's pulling that weight. It feels heavier. It's a dynamic resistance because it's getting heavier. It's not whatever one or two pounds or whatever weights you have in your wrist weight. No, no, it's much heavier. It's dynamic force. So basically that wrist weight is playing tug of war with your tendons, ligaments, and your joints. Why this is bad is, is it puts you at a greater risk of injury for no real reason. Even more so because we're not just doing this, we're doing this and this and that and this and that and this and that. So you're moving in all sorts of different directions. So it's putting a lot of strain on your joints that it's not used to. You don't want to do that. Not only your joints, but you're changing the way your whole body moves this weight around and you're probably sore in ways that you shouldn't be afterwards. But Ari, I'm trying to tone my arms. <laughs> awesome. Aren't we all? Let me show you a way to tone your arms without risking an injury. Do your strength training before you work out. You can bang it all out in about five minutes. Use lighter weights, do three sets of eight to 12 repetitions three times a week. Just do it right before you're about to do any kind of cardio. Set it up circuit style, which means you rest less and you don't have to waste as much time. Here's a simple one that you can incorporate into your week with minimal equipment. Grab one set of dumbbells, do eight to 12 reps of hammer curls, then immediately go into eight to 12 reps of front raises then immediately into tricep kickbacks for eight to 12 reps, then reverse flies for eight to 12 reps. Rest one minute and then repeat it two more times. Boom, you're done. You don't gotta wear wrist weights. Even better is you'll be able to work your entire arm in a way that makes sense and does not put you at risk for an injury. Just go to Target and buy some five to 10 pound weights. That's all you really need. But Ari, I'm trying to burn more calories when I work out. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna work out for five minutes longer than you anticipated. That's all. Don't add the wrist weights. Just work out for five more minutes. That's like one long song on Beat Saber. It's a quick hit on Supernatural. It's easy. Just add it to the end. Whenever you thought you were gonna be done, say, I'm not done. I'm doing one more song. And do it. Studies have shown the calorie burn on wrist weights and ankle weights are pretty negligible. Trust me, science doesn't lie. But Ari, the workouts aren't hard enough. I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna blow your mind. You do not have to be smoked and left gasping for air with every single workout. If you look at any competitive lifter, athlete, or so on, they are not pushing 100% 
at every single workout. They take rest days. They work out at 80% some days. They work out at 95% some days. And some days, they even work out at 60%. Yes, that's right. You do not have to try to kill yourself with every single workout. It's true. In fact, it's actually better for you if you take a rest day here and there. I know. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna program in some hard days where you're giving 100% of your effort. I like Supernatural for this reason because every day is a different workout. Some days they're high intensity, some days they're medium, some days they're low. And you're gonna do it, all of them, high, medium, and low. Yes, you're probably gonna burn less calories on low than you are on high, and that's okay. Please stop worrying about how many calories are burnt. Because here's what happens. If you push yourself 100% of the time every single workout, your workouts will continue to get worse. But if you work out 95% of your capacity one day, and then 80%, and then 60%, and then you come back and do another one that's like 95 to 100%, you're gonna work out harder than you did. And it's gonna be a lot better of a workout because you've given yourself some time to recover from the last one. So what are wrist weights for? Why are they invented? The purpose of a wrist weight is for somebody with limited grip to actually be able to do a regular workout. Remember I was showing you those hammer curls? If your grip is fine, you can grab a dumbbell. But there are some people with hand injuries, arm injuries, or just at a level where they can't grip onto a dumbbell, and they can use wrist weights to do all of those same things I showed you earlier. That's their intention. It's not for you to accidentally punch yourself in the face playing Beat Saber. So there you go. Add some light strength work right before your workout. Add five minutes to your workout and give yourself time where you're not pushing yourself 100%. Those are three things that you can do to replace your wrist weights and not be at risk for injury. My name is Ari with Fit Pro VR, and don't forget to get your workout in today. Unless it's a rest day or an 80% day. Get a little bit of a, you, you know what I mean.